Om Namo Bhagavate Sri Ramanaya Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharshi Life Kashi, also called Varanasi, is one of the oldest cities in the world. Sages and saints have regarded it as the most sacred place since time immemorial. The holy river Ganga turns back towards its source, the Himalayas at Kashi. So it has the name Uttara Vahini, meaning north flowing. Such a turn towards its source, sages say, is most auspicious for obtaining peace and spiritual fulfillment. Through all ages, Sages have visited Kashi for the sole purpose of taking a dip in the Uttara Vahini. An act which they felt helped them turn within to their source and remain established in the reality of inner silence. A child was born in a South Indian village of Tiruchuzi. On 30th December, 1879, on the sacred Arudra Darshan Day, the day of Lord Shiva, in which Shiva chose to appear as a column of fire. And it was born at the auspicious time when the idol of the Lord in the local Shiva temple returned to its shrine inside the temple after going in procession on the main streets of the village. This very significant event of returning or turning within became the essence of the life and teaching of this child, Venkataraman. It is usually reported in books about Sri Ramana's childhood that there was nothing in particular to record, that he was an ordinary child like all other children. But the truth is that the truth, Aranachala, began shining in the heart of the child Venkataraman right from his birth. Describing the sound and shining of Arunachala in his heart, Sri Bhagavan himself wrote in one of his poems, From the age of innocence, the sound and shining of Arunachala in my heart was heralding it as something of surpassing grandeur. Needless to say that the child's attention was drawn within all the time to the throbbing spurana, the vibration of Arunachala. One day, Father Arunachala induced the young Venkataraman from within to ask a visiting relative where he was coming from. He replied in one word, Arunachala. It was the very first time that the lad heard the sound Arunachala from outside of him. Later, Arunachala, the fire aspect of Lord Shiva, gave Venkataraman the death experience and awakened him to the self within. While experiencing death, he dived within and inquired as to who died. He realized that while the body died, he remained as the spirit, the eternal I am. Instantly, the boy of 16 blossomed spiritually into a sage of steady wisdom. He also came across the Puriya Puranam a Tamil book about 63 Shiva saints. Immersed in it, 
He longed for Lord Shiva's blessing to be like one among them. Father Arunachala accepted his son's inner longing and drew him like a magnet to his abode. After leaving a letter behind in which Venkataraman wrote, I am going in search of my father. The youth left Madurai and reached the slopes of the holy hill Arunachala. For 54 years he stayed unmoved from the base of the holy hill, which he fondly addressed as his father and his guru. During those arduous days in Arunachala, he was totally absorbed in introversion, rejoicing in the inner silence. Later, he was given the glowing and befitting appellation or new name, Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharshi. Soon devotees started gathering around and basking themselves in the warmth and peace of his effulgent presence. Out of the depths of his total devotion and surrender to Arunachala, poems sprang forth spontaneously. In one of them, he wrote, This hill, the lodestone of lives, arrests the movements of anyone who so much as thinks of it draws him face to face with it and fixes him motionless like itself and feeds upon the soul thus ripened. When devotees sought spiritual guidance, his inimitable upadisa or initiation to them invariably was turn within and be the inner silence. Those who could not grasp the inner silence were initiated through his look, his glance of grace. A Supreme Court judge had this to say about Sri Bhagavan. Anyone can go and sit near him, invited or uninvited. Anyone can partake of the homely meal in the ashram whether native or foreigner, high caste or outcast, the Maharshi has not the least tinge in him of caste, creed, color, race, class, sex, or country. He has not only sacrificed all forms of private possession, he has sacrificed even the privacy of time. He is the sublime example of what a sage ought to be. Grant Duff, an aristocratic Englishman's experience is revealing. He said, The moment the Maharshi looked at me, I felt he was the truth and the light. It did not take long to see that I was in direct contact with one who has passed beyond boundaries of senses and was indeed already merged in the absolute of his true self. Never be, perhaps in world history was the supreme truth, reality, or sought placed within such easy reach of so vast a multitude. Meanwhile, Professor Banning Richardson observed, What Jesus the Christ taught 2,000 years ago, that I am in my Father, and my Father is in me, my Father and I are one, is the same as he who teaches today at Arunachala. Bhagavan Ramana was and is unique. So too his life and his teaching was and is unique. He was open to all and available to all, all the 24 hours. He treated anyone, everyone, 
and everything equally. His tremendous compassion and love included humans and birds, all animals, plants, trees, and even rocks. One of the early ashram dogs, Jackie, would sit motionless in front of the Maharshi, meditating like all other devotees, neither barking nor wagging his tail. He never even sniffed food kept on the stool next to him in front of the Maharshi. Seeing this, the Maharshi himself once remarked, Jackie is in the state of samadhi. A monkey once came into the hall to grab a banana from a big bunch kept in front of the Maharshi. He put his hand on them and looked at the Maharshi, who looked back intently at the monkey. The monkey stayed motionless, in a state of quietude for a long time. When he regained his habitual monkey nature, he grabbed a banana and began to rush out. Sri Bhagavan mildly asked him, What is the urgency? Why don't you stay quietly in that state? What kingdom are you going to conquer outside? As if praying for the Maharshi's personal attention and sacred touch to attain the highest state of emancipation, a crow once waited three whole days on the top of a pole just outside the hall. When Sri Bhagavan was informed of it, he got up, went near the crow and said, Oh, you are waiting for me. He then opened the crow's beak, poured a few drops of water from his kamandalu, the water pot, and looked at the crow with intense love. The crow opened its eyes and dropped its body in the hands of the Maharshi. Maharshi himself built its tomb, confirming that it had attained freedom. The cow Lakshmi used to come to Sri Bhagavan twice every day, once in the morning and again in the evening. She would ignore everyone else and come straight to Sri Bhagavan even if there were large crowds around him, and then bend down and lick his feet. The Maharshi used to remark, Just as all of you prostrate, this cow's way of conveying reverence is through licking my feet. Sri Bhagavan had absolutely no sense of ownership of anything, including his body. When doctors cut off the infected flesh from his cancer-affected arm, he too looked on with a detached look, similar to that of the doctors. When the devotees cried and lamented that he was leaving them all and going away, Bhagavan Ramana declared, Where could I go? I am here. It was indicating the here within the heart of every one of us. On 14th April, 1950, the sun Ramana merged in the source from where he came, the hill of the holy fire, Father Aranajala, in the form of light. The light we call Sri Bhagavan had merged with the light of lights, the Aranachala Yoti.